I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on polynomials. Here we are going to take a very interesting question and that is regarding common roots of quadratic functions. Right? Consider a1x square plus b1x plus c1 equals to 0 and a2x square plus b2x plus c2 equals to 0. Determine the condition for the above equations to have both common roots only one common root. Right? So these are the two parts of the question which we are going to do. This is extremely important from test point of view, right? So let us first consider the case when we have both common roots. Right. Now that means both the equations have same roots, right? So let's say the roots are uh, alpha and beta right so these are the two roots which are common to both of them right now what does it really mean right uh, if we have two roots as common in that case the the equation uh, should be what then then we know that alpha plus beta the sum of these two roots will be minus b over a right so in the first equation it will be minus b1 over a1 right and the product of these two roots alpha and beta will be c1 over a1 correct so this is from the first set of roots right now since they are common right since they are common we also have from the second set of equation that alpha plus beta is equals to minus b2 over a2 and alpha times beta equals to c2 over a2. Is that clear to you, right? Perfect. Now from here, we could relate very easily, right? So let's connect these. So if the roots are common, then we have alpha plus beta, these should be equal, correct? And their product, they should also be equal. Right? So it really means that I could write that minus B1 over A1 should be equal to minus B2 over A2 right and that means what this means that a1 over a2 we just cross multiply right so we get a1 over a2 and is equals to b1 over b2 perfect okay so this is what we get from our sum of roots and now if we compare the product of roots, what do we get? We get C1 over A1 equals to C2 over A2. That implies that A1 over A2 is equal to C1 over C2. Right? So the condition is very clear to us combining these two now. So you can combine these two, correct? You should get what? you get a1 over a2 is equal to b1 over b2 is equal to c1 equals to c2. That means these coefficients are in fixed ratio, correct? So that is the condition for both the quadratic functions to have exactly same roots, right? So I hope you understand the situation. It is kind of what? It is that we have a graph maybe kind of like this, right? The other graph, they have the same roots means it could be something like this. Right. So you see there are common roots. It could be even like this. So that is what we mean when we say both common roots correct so if that is the case in that case the ratios of their coefficients should be equal and the ratio of constant that is the constant value is that clear to you right 
So that is clear. Now let's get into part B, which is only one common root. Perfect. So let's look into that now. Now let us take the second part. We'll consider the same two quadratic equations, a1 x square plus b1 x plus c1 equals to 0, and a2 x square plus b2 x plus c2 equals to 0. And now we're looking for the solution when there is only one common root. Let this common root be, let us say alpha, right? If alpha is the root, in that case, the equation could be written as, uh, a1 alpha square plus b1 alpha plus c1 equals to 0 and we could write the other equation as a2 alpha square plus b2 alpha plus c2 equals to 0. Right? Since alpha is the common root, if I substitute the value of alpha, I should get 0 as the answer, right, for this particular equation, right? It should be satisfied with this value of alpha. Now, if I multiply the first equation by a2 and the second by a1, so we will consider the system of equations, right? We get what? We get a1, a2, alpha square, plus b1, a2, alpha plus c1 a2 equals to 0 and if I multiply this with a1 then I get a1 a2 alpha square plus a1 you can write b2 a1 alpha plus c2 a1 equals to 0. Now we get this set. Now if I take away one from the other Right. If I find the difference of these two, then see what do we get. So these two terms, they cancel and we get the value of alpha, right? So, so we can write this alpha is common. So we can write alpha and here we get B1 A2 minus B2 A1. plus C1 A1 minus C2 C1 A2 minus C2 A1 equals to 0. Okay. So that is what we get. And from here, we can isolate alpha, taking this term to the next side. So we get alpha equals to, now if you take this, this becomes positive. So we get C2 A1 minus C1 A2 divided by these terms, right? So I write this as A2 B1, right? Or we can write this as uh, either way. We write this as A2 B1 minus A1 B2, right? You can actually also write this as a two C one minus A one C two over A one B two minus A two B one. Right. So if we change the order for both numerator and denominator, you could also write this as shown here. Okay. So that is how we could get the value of alpha. Now. If I multiply this equation by B2 and the other one by B1, then what happens? Now, what I'm going to do here is we are going to multiply this with B1 and this by B2. So we get A1 B1 B2 alpha square plus B1 B2 alpha plus C1 B2 equals to 0. And multiplying this one with B1, we get a2 b1 alpha square plus b1 b2 alpha plus b b1 c1 c2 equals to 0 right now if you take the difference now if you take away these two equations 
you get what alpha square is, right? So subtracting, we get alpha square A1B2 minus A2B1. These terms cancel, and here we get plus B2C1 minus B1C2 equals to 0, right? Or we get alpha square as equal to so when we take this on the right side, in that case, the order we can change and we can write this as B1C2 minus B2C1 over this denominator, which is A1B2 minus A2B1. Correct. So we get a term for alpha square. This is alpha for us, right? Equation 1, let's say this is equation 2 for alpha square. Now you'll notice that their denominators are same, a1, b2 minus a2, b1, right? So if I divide alpha square by alpha, even then we get alpha, right? So we can say that alpha is also equal to alpha square divided by alpha, correct? So dividing this by this term, we get b1, c2 minus b2, c1 divided by the numerator of alpha, which is a2c1 minus a1c2. Correct. So that is another expression which you get for alpha. And now we'll, uh, what we can see from here that, you know, there are different ways in which we can find alpha. So this is another equation to find alpha, right? So you could either find using this formula or you could find using that formula. But anyway, both are alpha, so you could also equate them. And that is to say that we could also write from equation 1 and equation 3 that both are equal. And therefore, you can say that uh, B1C2 minus B2C1 divided by all this, which is A2C1 minus A1C2, should be equal to this, which is A2C1 minus A1C2 divided by a1b2 minus a2b1 correct now if we cross multiply then what do we get so here we have uh, a1 a2c1 minus a1c2 which is same as this right so if we cross multiply now we'll cross multiply so when we cross multiply you get a1b2 minus a2b1 times this, which is b1c2 minus b2c1 equals 2. The square of this, which is a2c1 minus a1c2 whole square. Now, this is a very important formula, which you can remember to solve questions based on only one root, right? You also see that this product is a perfect square, right? So that is another condition. So I hope that helps. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.